Well, Aaron, it looks like it's just you and me today, huh? We'll give it a few minutes, which I hate to do, but it is what it is. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? <clears throat> good morning, Rabbi. How are you doing? Real good, Aaron. How are you doing? Uh, I don't want to lie, so I'm not doing too good, but I'm doing good. <laughs> Well, remember, we're recording, so maybe. Yeah, we yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you later. There you go. There you go. All right. Um, let's give it another few minutes, see who else comes on. Today, we're going to be discussing the holidays. Okay, there's Al. I'll give it a few more minutes, and we'll go for it. And, of course, as usual, we will. I will be putting this on uh, both my website and on my YouTube. And you guys have access to the Adobe Acrobat document as well as the PowerPoint. So uh, we're good to go. Okay, Al, Alexis, and Aaron. That's interesting. Everybody here, except for me, their names start with A. How about that, huh? Al, Alexis, and Aaron. <laughs> okay, and uh, for all of you as well, happy Passover. Happy Passover. Happy and Passover, actually, you too, brother. Sorry? And we're going to be discussing Passover as part of our journey through the festivals, journey through the year. So as a quick, quick, quick. As a quick overview, um, the Jewish year is a very uh, interesting program, and it is a program. We start in the spring, the month of Aviv, which Aviv means spring, which is now. And it's interesting that we're doing this, this, we're covering this today because we're in the middle of Passover, and Passover is the beginning of the Jewish holidays. Now, it's interesting that we see these dreidels. Um, and we see some coins and we see a shofar in this picture. Hanukkah is really not much of a festival. It is and it isn't. It's got no reference in the Torah. It has maybe one verse, one verse out of the whole Talmud that takes seven years and four months to go through. The rabbis, when they put together the Hebrew Bible, didn't even include the Book of Maccabees in our Tanakh. And somebody pointed out, hi, Becky. And somebody pointed out once that isn't it interesting that we Jews observe Hanukkah and we don't have the Book of Maccabees in our, uh, in our uh, canon, I guess that's the right word. And yet, the Christians have the two books of Maccabees in their canon, and yet they do not observe Hanukkah. Go figure. All right. <laughs> anyway, um, we have the Jewish holidays, which is a journey throughout the course of the year. So let's take a look at what we have. And you shall celebrate the festivals and be altogether joyful that is from deuteronomy chapter 16 verses 14 to 15. the jewish holidays are sacred days we live by the rhythms of two calendars one secular and the other sacred so passover is actually the beginning of the year it's the beginning of the months the months that with the names of the months that we have today have come down to us from uh, i guess babylon because they used to count the months the way we count the days of the week. You know, we have the first day out before Shabbat, you know, today is Yom Rishon, tomorrow Yom Sheni, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, same thing with the months. They adopted the names of the months after exile. So we're going to dig into the Jewish calendar with its seasons, separations, and all that. Here is a picture of the Jewish calendar, and we see it here in the Adobe Acrobat, and we see it here in the uh, PowerPoint presentation. 
How does one keep alive that incredible feeling of encountering God and feeling more human, more significant than you ever did before? One of the ways uh, the Torah offers us is the setting aside of special days when ordinary concerns are transcended so that our souls are free to concentrate on the eternal, even as married couples clear a day uh, to mark their wedding anniversary, capture the way they felt about each other and what they promised each other on their wedding day with a consecration that their busy lives otherwise don't afford them. So this is actually a pretty cool way to look at it. We see the Jewish holiday calendar and you see it's kind of like a wheel around the year. And the first year, the first month of the year is the month of Nisan, month of Aviv. Pesach and Yom HaShoah. Here it's good because they include the um, secular holidays. Uh, Yom HaShoah is the day of the catastrophe. Shoah means catastrophe. And it refers to the Holocaust. In fact, next week, um, we're going to end pretty much at 1245. I have an event to go to at 130 in Marietta. Uh, for the past number of years, uh, people in Marietta have been putting on something called the Holocaust March of Remembrance. And the city of Marietta has been very accommodating. In their town square, they have a uh, memorial to World War II veterans. They are also in the process of building a memorial to the Holocaust as well. So uh, we'll be observing, I think Yom HaShoah is maybe next Tuesday, but I'm not sure. So the month of Aviv, which is a, uh, this is a lunar calendar, Nisan, as it's called now. Pesach, Passover, which we're in now, Yom HaShoah. Uh, the next month, Iyar, Yom HaZikaron, Yom HaAtzma'ot, and Lag Ba'omer. Yom HaZikaron and Yom HaAtzma'ot are the Israeli equivalents of Independence Day and Memorial Day, one right after another. Independence Day, Yom HaZikaron, Yom HaAtzma'ot is uh, the Memorial Day. That's when they honor their veterans. Lag Ba'omer, between Passover and and Shavuot, we count 33, uh, I'm sorry, 49 days of the Omer. The Omer is a unit of measure equal to about 43.6 eggs, something like that. And it signifies the offering that the uh, people would offer the Levites, the barley, the first uh, grain offering, the first grain harvest. And um, it is considered today to be sort of a semi morning because we don't have a temple. Um, I personally don't see it that way. Um, but the point is Lagba Omer, and that's the 33rd day of the Omer is considered celebration. People like bonfires, things like that. Um, it's called Lag because in Hebrew, the letters are also used for numbers. So the Lamed is the number for, is the letter used for the number 30. And the Gimel being the third letter of the Aleph Bet is the number of three. So we have, that's how we get 33, uh, Lama Gimel, and they just put it together and they call that Log. Now, there's a few other holidays that actually do the same thing, and we'll get to that. So Shavuot, we are counting down on the 50th day after Passover, after the first day of Passover, we have Shavuot, which literally means weeks, because we're counting seven weeks. And this is when Moses had gone up to Mount Sinai and received the Ten Commandments. Tisha B'Av is the ninth of Av. Tisha B'Av, the ninth day in the month of Av. It is a day of mourning. It is the only other time in the year when we do a full, complete fast from the evening to the evening. It's a 26-hour fast. It commemorates a lot of tragedies in our uh, heritage. It commemorates the destruction of the first and the second temple, and it also commemorates the end of World War II, which many see as the beginning of the Holocaust. The month of Tishri, which is actually the seventh month, usually September, October, that is the beginning of the spiritual year, Rosh Hashanah. Here we have the beginning of the secular year, when contracts are ratified, kings ascend their throne. And we have the spiritual new year when we change the year, when 5783 will become 5784. Rosh Hashanah, head of the year. 
we have our 10 days of awe when we are taking stock of ourselves. Now, how often do we take stock of ourselves? Every single day. However, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, that's a more formal day. That's well, if you, re- if you didn't take stock of yourself during the year, now you're really going to be forced to focus in and look at all the stuff you did or didn't do. So Rosh Hashanah is on the first day of Tishrei. Yom Kippur is the 10th day of Tishrei. And as it says in the Torah, for Yom Kippur, you will afflict yourselves. And the interpretation is that no food, no water, no pleasure. We just sit in the temple all day and we pray and we get really in touch with our God. Uh, Rabbi Her- Dr. Hertz in our Sinsino Chumash calls it a day of atonement and he breaks down the word atonement of at one mint when we're at one with Hashem. In the 15th day of the month of Tishrei, we have Sukkot, uh, when we dwell in huts, uh, honoring both the, uh, our ancestors that dwelled in the wilderness for 39 years under temporary huts. And it is also the fall harvest. So it is the Jewish Thanksgiving. Uh, we have seven days of Sukkot, the eighth day, Shemini at Sarah. Shemini is eight, at Sarah is uh, of assembly. It is the eighth day of assembly. So the offerings for the seven days of Sukkot uh, come to 70 bowls, one bowl for each of the ancient 70 nations. But Shemini at Sarah is just our time with God alone. God's like, okay, we had our party, everybody's gone. Now it's just you and us, let's just hang for a little bit, for a day. And then we have Simchat Torah. In Israel, they're the same day out here in the diaspora. They're two different days. Simchat Torah is a uh, rabbinical mandated holiday. It's not in the Torah. But through the ages, there were different um, incarnations of reading the Torah. Uh, Years and years and years ago, hundreds of years ago, when they first started doing it, they'd read the Torah over a span of three years. Uh, Then they came along and said, no, let's just do it over the course of the year. And they decided that every year after the high holidays, they would uh, have a celebration. They'd read the last portion, read the first uh, chapter and the first three verses of the second chapter of Genesis, which is the creation and the Shabbat. And we'd roll the Torah. We'd have a big celebration. We call everybody up for an aliyah. We can also in the uh, evening, we can call people up for an aliyot if you'd like. And we dance around with the Torahs and we roll and we start over again. In the month of Kislev, 25th of Kislev, we have Hanukkah. And we know about Hanukkah. It's a day that actually is not in the Torah. And it's, uh, you got maybe one verse out of the whole Talmud. And it commemorates in the second temple, the Seleucids, which were Greek uh, and and, and an Assyrian uh, army came down. They tried, they destroyed the temple, desecrated uh, the Maccabees, uh, the uh, family of the Hasmonean priests, you know, got rid of them. Uh, miraculously, the one day's amount of oil burned for eight days, giving them time to uh, uh, press and have uh, and and uh, consecrate other olive oil. So we celebrate that for eight days. We have the month of Tevet. The month of Shavat, we have two Bishvat. That is the new year of trees. And two is actually a combination of the letters Tet and Vav. Tet is the number for nine. Vav is the number for six. And the number and the Vav, letter Vav, is also used uh, for two vowels, the O and the U. So they put them together and they say two. The Tet is a T. The Vav can be used as an U. Two Bishvat. Fifteenth day of the month of Shavat. Then we have Purim, which celebrates the fact that between the periods of the first and second temple, uh, we were in exile and we were in Persia and uh, the grand vizier, the prime minister of Haman tried to do away with us and he was stopped and we honor that miracle. Now, there are typically 12 months of the year and this is a lunar year. Each month is 29 or 30 days, since a lunar cycle is 29 and what is it, three quarter days or something? So each year we are 10 or 11 days behind the secular calendar, which is a solar calendar. So the lunar calendar is 354 days, the uh, secular calendar is 365 after about three years. We're actually a month behind. So what they do is they add an extra month to make it up. 
So they add a second Adar. So the question is, you have two Adars in a leap year. When do we observe Purim? In the first Adar or the second Adar? Second. Second? Why? I'm not quite sure. The answer is we do and we do observe it in the second. That that way Purim is always 30 days before Passover. Oh, okay. I had read that, but I didn't know why. Yes. And actually, there are certain special Shabbatot throughout the course of the year. And there have to, and the and the Shabbatot, there's four special Shabbatot, Shabbat portions, or they're not actual portions, but they're observance, and they either have a special moft here, which is that additional reading we do after the seven, or they have a special haftarah, which is a portion that we take from the um, prophets, and they they come right before Pesach. So in order to line that up, Purim is in the second Adar. So if you're observing a yurt site when somebody had died or somebody, you know, or if you're observing a celebration when somebody was born in the second Adar, you just move it to the first Adar for that year. Okay, so I've probably just gone through the, <laughs> through the whole thing, <laughs> through the whole <laughs> uh, thing. So, but let's keep going. Any questions thus far? Moving along. All right, moving along. So moving along, um, what they do here are uh, they kind of separate the holidays into categories. First category is our people's story. Pesach, Shavuot, and Sukkot, commemorate events. These are also what's known as the three pilgrimage festivals or Shalosh, three, Raglayim, feet. These are the holidays that the Israelites would journey to the temple for the celebration. Shalosh Reglayim. And that's why in your prayer book, you'll see you have an Amidah for Shabbat, then you'll have an Amidah, you know, the silent standing prayer for Shalosh Reglayim, special where they insert like we have now. And Simchat Torah is there because I, yeah, I guess it's kind of a part of our story. All right, moments to pause. And these are sacred holidays. This is when we just ignore everything else and just go deeply into this holiday. Shabbat, of course, seventh day, day of rest, when you can get spiritually in touch with your spiritual self and with Hashem. Rosh Hashanah, which is in the seventh month, which is kind of a longer, when you think about it, Shabbat. Shabbat is the seventh day. Rosh Hashanah is the seventh month, right? And then Yom Kippur is Shabbat Shabbaton, a Sabbath of Sabbaths, when we just block out everything and we just completely focus on our spiritual selves. Then we have holidays of history, Hanukkah and Purim, which observe, which uh, commemorate miracles. Hanukkah, the miracle of the oil, one day's oil burning for eight days. Purim, the miracle of the fact that we weren't destroyed by Haman. Haman. Tisha B'Av, ninth of Av, uh, it's a day of catastrophes where we're uh, honoring those. Uh, then we got Lagba Omer, Tu Bishvat, Yom HaShoah, <clears throat> etc. So we're, we're going to focus on these big 10 for our class. Festivals act as lodging for travelers making their way through the course of the year. These festival inns are special accommodations, not solely for rest or retreat, but also places to halt and take our bearings and make sure we're traveling and not going around in circles. Rabbi Kushner, how does one keep alive that incredible feeling of encountering God at Sinai and feeling more human, more significant than you ever did before? One of the ways the Torah offers us is the setting aside of special days. See, so we don't forget our roots. We don't forget what it's all about. <clears throat> These is when ordinary concerns are transcended so that our souls are free to concentrate on the eternal, even as married couples clear a day to mark their wedding anniversary. The Jewish religion affirms that life that is here and now. Now, this is something that a point that Rabbi Hertz in the Sonsino Chumash, in the, you know, those essays between the various, um, between the various uh, uh, books of the Torah, he talks a little bit about um, the fact that you know, why don't Jews believe in reincarnation? The answer is we do, but he makes the point, you're here, it's now, deal with it. Don't worry about 
a thousand years ago or a thousand years to come, right? So. Okay, um, to get from here to there, you need both a goal and a process to keep you going. And in Judaism, the holidays basically supply both. In the face of widespread evil, evil and suffering, the holy days teach the central idea of redemption. They keep the idea, the idea real by restaging the great events of Jewish history that validate the whole. In their variety, the holidays incorporate rich living experiences that sustain the human capacity to hold steadfast on course. Sacred Dave gives sustenance to spiritual life and a dimension of depth to physical life. Holy Days provide a record of the struggle to be faithful to the covenant. While chronicling history, they distill the lessons learned along the way. And because they are popular, the holidays make the dream and the process of its realization the possession of the entire people. The Jewish calendar is an experiential curriculum for teaching the most important stories, ideas, and values to the Jewish, of the Jewish people. With each holiday, we don't just remember an historic event, we do actions to help us re-experience it. Um, Judaism is a very in-your-face religion. You don't just sit there and read a book, you don't say a few prayers and go home, you actually do it. it. And by doing it, you actually get the full sense of what that holiday and festival is really about. So again, here's the Shalosh Raglayim, the three pilgrimages to the, to the uh, temple. And as you see, the holidays also coincide with agricultural events. Why is agriculture so important? Think about it. Not so much today. We live in an industrialized world, but this is how we eat. This is how we live, right? So we're always on these major festivals, understanding that God is with us, that, our bount that we owe our bounty to God. Pesach, Passover, Shavuot, and Sukkot. So Pesach, Passover, as you're learning today, commemoration of the Exodus. It is a symbolic reenactment through the Passover Seder and cleansing of homes of Chumetz, which are 11 products. Shavuot, commemoration of the revelation at Sinai. Tikkun Leil Shavua, reenacting the Revelation, Book of Ruths, which is a Megillah, a scroll that's read during Shavua. Uh, some of you may have seen or heard that Passover, we read the Megillah, the scroll of Song of Songs, which discusses the idea uh, uh, that Israel and God are like a wife and a husband, because after all, Passover was really the first formalization of our relationship with God. Shavuot, the giving of the Torah. Why do we read the book of Ruth? Because Ruth was the ancestor of David, who became the ancestor of the uh, Jewish monarchy. A sukkot knees, yep, there it is. It's like a lean-to. Two and a half walls made of any reasonably sturdy material. This is from the Talmud, by the way. A roof made of detached plant material called shechach. Sounds like a Klingon word. Klingon word, right? Shechach. <laughs> And that's where we get the word sukkot from, shkach. Provides more shade than sun, but you need to be able to see through the stars. Large enough to fit at least one person at a table. Of course, you know, sometimes they're bigger. As you see, when we do sukkot, we just use our porch, use the covering and make it that way. But uh, in years gone by, and I've had pictures of this on my website, uh, went down to Home Depot, got six, got six, six, foot, six foot stakes with a little point on it, Beat it into the ground, took that la that lattice that you see people with ivy growing, hammered that on, put a little tarp around it, and it was cut. It was like a two or three seater. It was fun. We used to hang out in there at night, and it was great. I loved it. For the sukkah, we also have the four species. 
And these represent various vegetables. They also represent different things. So the palm branch is the lulav. And the palm branch represents like the eyes. Or the, the willow branch represents the lips. The myrtle represents the spine. And the etrog, this thing, represents the heart. And we take those during uh, Sukkot when it's not Shabbat. We wave them in, in, eight, in six directions, up, down, right, left, back, forth. When we, do, when we do that, when we do Hallel. And Hallel, which means thanks, you know, praise, that's what we're doing. <clears throat> so we also have Shabbat and High Holidays, moments of pause and reflection, weekly and annually, that ask us to slow down and take stock Shabbat, right? It's, a, it's, an, inter, it's an interruption in our material life, in our secular life. Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur an interruption, are a larger, a longer rep, uh, interruption in our life. So here is kind of a table, kind of shows you a little bit about how many days we take. So Pesach, day one and two, or the actual festival, that was uh, Thursday and Friday, Friday morning. Chacha Moed, Chacha Moed. So Chal means secular, Moed means seed. So Chachamoed is the secular seeds, or literally the intermediate days. And those are these four days. So day three was actually yesterday, Shabbat. Today is day four. And day seven and eight are also important days. We have some important Torah readings. So day seven is uh, the day when we read the passage of the Song of the Sea, when we pass through in safety, and day eight, uh, sundry laws of the firstborn and, you know, give uh, forgiving debt, things like that. And day eight is only is also when we do a holiday called Sukkot, uh, Sukkot, Yisker. Yisker means Yizacher, it should remember. And there are four times a year on the last day of a holiday when we do Yisker. And it's kind of a big mourner's cottage when we remember specific people who passed on. Uh, Pesach and Sukkot in Israel and Reform Judaism, they only do seven days. Uh, the, the rabbis thought that uh, if you're outside of Israel, you should do two days because lest you forget, lest you miss it, lest you miss the announcement, you know, put a fence around the Torah, that type of thing. Shavuot, two days in the diaspora, one day in Israel. Rosh Hashanah, same thing, two days everywhere, first and second day. Yom Kippur is one day everywhere. I mean, good luck fasting for two days, right? Hanukkah, eight days, Purim one day, Tisha B'Av one day. Shabbat and the high holidays. The notes I handle no better than in many pianists, but the pauses between the notes. Ah, that's where the art resides. That's interesting. Hanukkah Purim and Tisha B'Av. Holy days provide a record of the struggle to be faithful to the covenant. While chronicling history, they distill the lessons learned along the way. And because they are popular, the holidays make the dream and the process of its realization the possession of the entire people. Hanukkah talks about the Antiochus and the Syrian Greeks came in, destroyed the temple. Everybody wanted to take us over, right? And they had the Maccabean revolt. So the Maccabees, which were the uh, family of the Hasmonean dynasty of the high priest Mattathias or Matthew. And you see, we have a seven branched menorah. With Hanukkah, we introduced yet another menorah, one with eight stems, right? Because of the eight days of Hanukkah. So we have, actually have two menorahs. This is called the menorah and a Hanukkah menorah is actually called the Hanukkiah. Hanukkah means rededication. One of the prayers that's actually part of our daily liturgy, I do it every now and then, uh, Mizmor Shir Hanukkah Babayat Ladavi, a song for the dedication of the house of David. It's also the story of light. Anybody a fan of Saturday Night Live? 
And I'm talking about the old days when they had the original crowd there. So there was one um, sketch that they did with uh, Gilda Radner and John Bellucci, and they're talking about the uh, holiday of Hanukkah. And, and <laughs> they swap over to John Belushi, and he's like acting the part of Judah the Maccabee. And they're sitting there, and they're like looking at this oil, and they're going, wow, look at that. It's burning. Wow, it's burning for eight days. And, and, some, and one of the other guys goes, wow, there's a miracle. And John Belushi turns to one of the guys and says, okay, you name the holiday Hanukkah. <laughs> he calls him Hanukkah. <laughs> it's pretty funny. That's cute. Yeah, it was cute. You probably find it on YouTube somewhere. How to light the Hanukia. All right, let's see how we light the Hanukia. Yeah, I couldn't find it. I was looking for it. I couldn't find it. Oh, well. The super, oh, oh also, let's go over um, Yom HaShoah, Yom HaZikaron, and Yom HaSmot, which we say Yom HaShoah. It's coming up. It's the, Shoah literally means catastrophe, and it commemorates the um, Holocaust. Remember the Holocaust, never forget. Yom HaZikaron, uh, Independence Day. And Yom Ma'ot Memorial Day. The super abbreviated, probably not entirely true, of Purim. King Ahasuerus of Persia needs a new queen. Esther, a Jew, is selected at a beauty pattern. And her real name is Hadassah. And I, I believe, this is just me, that they used the name Esther to disguise the fact that she was Jewish. Haman, Haman, king's evil advisor, develops a personal grudge against the Jews because Mordechai, Esther's uncle, wouldn't bow to him. Actually, this was really Esther's cousin. The king, saw, king A. Eshesveros signs an order of genocide against the Jews of Persia on Haman's request. He didn't just do it. Haman said, can I do it? And King Eshesveros like, yeah, sure, go ahead, why not? And then Esther risks her life to save her people, admits to King Eshesveros who she is, uh, Ashveros turns on Haman and says, what are you doing? You're going to kill my queen's people. Forget it. So they said, can you overturn the decree? And King Ashveros said, no, once I've done it, I've done it. But here's what I will do. I'll offer another decree saying that you Jews can, def will, can get weapons and defend yourself. And that's what happened. So here's the major holidays of the Jewish year. Um, random question. Um, I just thought about it right now since, um, you know, she, her, because her name was Hadassah, she went by Esther to hide the fact that she was Jewish. That's my um, interpretation, by the way. Oh, okay. I thought that was more common knowledge because I was going to ask what, if like Esther is like a, a Persian name. Yes. Or um, it's derived from some goddess, I believe. I forget who and what, but it's in the Talmud. They discuss it in the Talmud. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. That's just that's, just, that's just my interpretation. I don't gotcha. know who it is. I don't know if you ask somebody. Say, yeah, it's probably. Or no, he's wrong. So, 
Mm, okay. What was your question? Sorry. What was your question? Was it about? Where... Oh no, yeah, <laughs> it was if if you knew that Esther was a was a Persian name or not. It, yeah, I believe it. It does come from like some um, Persian or Mesopotamian. Yeah. Guy. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I forget what it is, but you probably look it up and see what it is. Yeah. Oh, look at that, Hamantashen. So the four mitzvot read the Megillah, which is scroll. Megillah means scroll. Retell the story, have an over-the-top celebration. All right, so what does that mean, over-the-top celebration? It means you're supposed to get drunk, or in Hebrew, shikard, shikur. That's the, that's the Hebrew word for drunk. Yiddish, it's shikard. You're supposed to get so shikard that you can't tell the difference between, or you, you, you can't tell the difference between Mordechai and Haman. Haman. What's the reason for that? I was Joy. curious. Joy, happiness, celebrating. Yes. Every Jewish holiday can be broken down into a concept that is best described by three phrases. Right. They tried to kill us. God saved us. Let's eat. Gotcha. The thing thing curious, curious to me, I was always wondering about this holiday was, mm -hmm. So much of Judaism and apartheid I like is, you know, is actually based on reason and keeping your faculties. We have yep. the rules, starting with the Ten Commandments and all that, and the holidays and the meaning behind that. I was just curious about this one, mm -hmm. which seems to permit at least once a year uh, complete abandonment of one's faculties. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And, and it's and remember, this is like a minor it, it's it's a minor yeah. festival, right? I mean, it's not like it's one of the Shalosh Reglayim where you're going to synagogue and you're praying and you're really paying attention, you know, like Passover, yeah. you know, you're going through the Haggadah, you want to make sure, you know, you do get to have four glasses of wine to kind of lighten you up. And uh, we discussed why you have those four glasses of wine. Uh, okay. They represent God, you know, took us out of Egypt, God redeemed us, God took us to the promised land, and God said, I'll be your, you'll, you'll be my people. So those are the four glasses of wine. I see. Oh, uh, maybe the hangover the next day makes you not want to do it until next year. <laughs> uh, it's funny you should say that because my son and I, one day, we sat down to read the Megillah. Mm -hmm. And instead of having groggers, we took a shot every time we had the word Haman. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Yeah. The middle of the third chapter, we both called it quits. I crawled upstairs and I woke up next morning to an absolute mess. Oh, Lord. It was pretty I bad. I, and, and it was Saturday night, so I walked in. I was teaching school at another synagogue. I walked right. in, all the kids looked at you, and they said, oh, my gosh, what happened to you? I looked at them, I said, poor them. Poor them. I got gotcha. you. Oh, that's interesting. Also, the abandonment of a relief of being saved from that terrible situation, too. Yeah, well, that's that's part of it, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and that's really kind of a big difference between Torum and Hanukkah. Yeah. Hanukkah, they tried to destroy us by destroying our 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 religion right. right by all the all the things we use for our religion Purim, they actually tried to destroy us for the people yeah as a people i mean you have a tractate of the talmud megillah which discusses Purim. there's no tractates that that discuss hanukkah yeah nothing it's it's a blip it's true Interesting. that's all it is the only reason why hanukkah is more important than it is is because it coincides with christmas I mean, there's, there's nothing about giving, giving presents and Hanukkah, you know, guilt, you know, that's it. That just became a modern contrapt con con conception because, again, because the Jewish kids felt bad that you were watching all the Christian friends get all these presents. Like, what about us? I said, all right, well. And a reform rabbi told my wife and I once that Hanukkah, Christmas, and I guess what else comes there? Eids and, and isn't there Kwanzaa or something? Or something like that. It's all based on the same concept, which is the Saturnalia, which is at the time of the year. It coincides with the time of the year when the actual day part of the day gets longer, more daylight. And the winter solstice or something? Yeah. You know what that is? That's when it is, the winter solstice. That's what it is. That's the Saturnalia. Yeah. And didn't the pagans have a big party about that time of year? Yes, they did. And that's so, really what this is. I mean, look at it. You know, Kodak is a festival of lights. Christmas, they're putting lights up all over the place, right? You know, what do they do for Kwanzaa? I guess they also light fires and stuff, right? Same thing. Yeah, it's interesting. I was um, 
kind of looking around through things and it seems like through the whole thing with christianity and everything else is a paganism a paganization of the jewish holidays yeah it, it really kind of is when you think about it yeah interesting well yeah. that part never made much sense to me but anyways might as well keep the original for Kwan oh i'm sorry for uh for kwanzaa i know they have their own their own menorah they do really um, yeah that they light and it's supposed to represent um different you know obviously different things but they have their own menorah how many oh, branches no. how many branches does it have i um uh, you know i think maybe six i'm not oh. too sure i'd have to look it up well, that's interesting yeah yeah, I remember when my kids were literally asked me if rabbits give colored eggs. I had a hard time explaining that one. <laughs> All right. I, said, I told him, well, I don't know about that. Jews practice Passover. That makes more sense. So I'll explain that one to you. And even though I didn't know much about Judaism back then, I told that story. Right. The whole rabbits and eggs thing. It's like, excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't program to my brain. Very interesting. Oh, I'm still looking for that Hanukkah thing. No, no. It's going to bother me. I'll probably find it later. No, I'm doing that laundry. No. Oh, well, one of these years, maybe I'll find it. All right, so the four mitzvot of Purim, read the Megillah. Okay, give gifts to friends, mishloch, mishloch, manot, give extra charity. It's another thing we do. That's why Shabbat Shekalim is right there, too. All right, so here's kind of a breakdown of the major holidays. Wow, we're almost done with this one. We're not done with this one. That's weird. Okay. So uh, this is probably just a redo of uh, what I've kind of gone over. So Shabbat, greatest of the Jewish spiritual institutions, the uh, dire day is dedicated to rest. Um, I always get questions. Can I work out on Shabbat? Can I play video games because I'm resting? You know, all that stuff. I'm like, look, the idea of Shabbat is that you're taking a break from the regular year, from the regular week, and you're getting in touch with your spiritual self. It's a day of rest. It's not a day when you sit around with the lights off wondering when it's going to be over so you can turn on a light. That's not the point. If you want to, if you want to play a video game, you know what? Go play a video game. But... Take some time aside and get in touch with God. Rosh Hashanah, Jewish New Year, time for contemplating the events, the events of the past year. Okay, major rituals, shofar, apples, honey, synagogue services. Well, I don't even know why they bother putting synagogue services there. They're always synagogue services. Rest and relaxation. Um, Sudat Shlishi. Okay, so you're supposed to eat three meals on Shabbat. And people are like, what does that mean? The Hebrew diet is basically two meals. One in the morning, one in the evening. And when they're out in the field, they kind of like snack a little bit. Um, Havdalah is a word that means separation. So you you might have seen uh, a service. We should do that one time. You know, with the... With the candle that's got multi wicks and the wine and the spices and uh i think we did it when did we do it we did it one time in the synagogue i forget when uh rosh hashanah we eat symbolic foods yom kippur uh teshuva that's coming back to, to torah fasting synagogue shofar talit is worn during evening service um day of atonement most sacred, marking the culmination of teshuva, examining our past deeds, and attempting to reconcile with those who we have harmed, which actually is a year-long process. We're supposed to be doing that all the time. 
uh, tenth of Tishrei. All right, so we've we've actually been through this. Uh, does anybody want to? I'll, I'll leave that up so you can look at it. Anybody have any questions on this? Excuse me. For Yom Kippur, um, how many attempts on reconciliation? Uh, according to the rabbis, three, because three is a number of strength. You're supposed to go to people three times. And if they don't forgive you after the third time, it's on them. And I've actually got that question from people uh, in their life, you know, maybe a parent or, a, or an offspring that they've had kind of a contention with. And they said, well, I've, I've apologized. In fact, this one guy I was visiting when I first became a rabbi, um, I guess he, uh, did he marry somebody who wasn't Jewish or something and his father wouldn't talk to him? And he goes, yeah, I never got over that. And I said, well, how many times did you try to, uh, uh, did you apologize to your dad? Oh, many, many times. I said, well, it's on him. You're, re you're relieved. You've done your duty. And later on, when I talked to his son, I, we talked about that. And I told him, oh, good, because that really bothered him. I said, no, he, he you know, he, he, you know, once, twice, three, done. If the person's going to be that stubborn and that unforgiving, then you've done your duty. They haven't done theirs. Any other questions? That's interesting. The whole three strikes, you're out kind of thing seems to yeah. manifest itself through many cultures. Yeah, it does. You know, there are there are actually certain numbers in Judaism that are important. Not and not when I say important, not superstitious important, but because of what they represent. OK, so three is a number of strength. That's why um, during uh, Yom Kippur and Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, we, we recite God's attributes three times when we're doing the Torah service. Hmm. And you do that during a regular Torah service too, when it's not Shabbat. Um, when we're doing Bikat HaMazon, the blessing, you know, when we're doing grace after meals, you know, you need three people to say, Rabbi Tani Barak, you know, let's all pray. You know, I mean, you go through that. Um, three people is the lowest chord of 18. So three is the number. Seven is an important number because it's a number of completion when God finished, you know, creation. So seven days of Shabbat, seven months is, you know, Tishrei, Rosh Hashanah. Seven years, Shemitah year, seven times seven years is a Jubilee. Um, ten. Ten commandments. Ten trials of Abraham. Dominion. Spies that were idiots, you know, things like that. So the question is, Yom Kippur, why do we wear white and why no leather? Okay, those are good questions. Um, the wearing of white is part of Yom Kippur. So one of the reasons why we can say Baruch, why we say Baruch Shem Kavod between the Shema and the Viahavta is one of the reasons is that it's an angelic recitation, something the angels say. And the reason we can say it out loud is because during Yom Kippur, we are elevating ourselves to the point of angels that cannot do anything wrong. And angels are white, wear white. And they stand, they don't have knees, so they don't, they don't sit. That's why we try to stand a lot during Yom Kippur. They don't eat a drink, so we don't eat and drink. You know, again, just one of the facets of Yom Kippur. Um, we don't wear leather because leather is considered a luxury. And we want to be humble. We don't want anything, you know, we don't want any, any show, any showing of ostentatious, ostentation, or whatever the noun would be, ostentatiousness, whatever that noun is. So we don't wear leather. And also, yeah, leather can be kind of comfort, comfortable like leather shoes, so we don't do that at all. Thank you. I had heard um, a different explanation and it was kind of creepy. It was that we we're dressing like death shrouds 
And I, I was like, mm, uh, I'm kind of not happy with that explanation. I like yours a lot better. Thank you. Some people will wear kittles, which is what people wear, you know, which is a death shroud. Um, whatever. <laughs> I'm not, I don't, I, I don't know enough to comment on it. All right, so I got these two backwards. Yom HaZikaron, and Zika, I should have known this is remembering, so it's Memorial Day. Remembers the soldiers who gave their lives to protect the Jewish state. Yom HaAzmuot, that's the Independence Day. So this one comes first, this one comes second. Now, during Shavuot, another thing that we do is we stay up late into the night to study, eat sweet dairy foods, drink a lot of coffee, you know, so you can stay up all night and discuss Torah. Um, Tisha B'Av, we read the Book of Lamentations, which is Jeremiah just really going, wow, you know, all these people doing stupid stuff. And Sukkot is actually... The book we read the book of Ecclesiastes. Do everything turn turn right. So I think we kind of went over most of this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, Where do we read Ecclesiastes? Suko. Yeah, I'm surprised I don't have it here. Yeah, they don't. Shavuot, well, summer barley harvest. Here's a recipe for cheesecake. Just one thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. One thing about the Jewish holidays, there's always really good food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it centers around food. You bet. Oh, man. Yeah, because you are what you eat, right? And it's very symbolic. You know, you can't get away from eating. You know, that's that's how you really enjoy stuff. True. Yeah, see, they don't talk about what, what Megillah we read for Sukkot. Oh. Well, just know that we read Ecclesiastes. Which is Solomon basically going, boy, did I blow it. Forum, the Jewish Carnival. Actually, Easter is the Christian Carnival. See, I'm Purim drunk in this. Here we go. Rava, who is one of the rabbis of the Talmud, said, I'm Purim, one must drink until one cannot distinguish between cursed be Haman and blessed be Mordechai. Rabbi and Rabbi Ziri, Zira once held a Purim party together, got very drunk in a stupor. Rabbi killed Rabbi Ziri. The next day, Rabbi prayed for mercy and revived Rabbi Zira. The Talmud is full of those stories. The next year, Rabbi said to Rabbi Ziri, come, sir, let's make another Purim party. Rabbi Ziri responded, a miracle does not happen every day. That's from the Babylonian Talmud, Megillah 7b. On celebration and tzedakah, Jews should eat meat and drink wine. So the Jewish diet is actually not really a carnivorous diet. It's really a vegetarian diet. The only time we eat meat really is special times during the year. It's a very healthy diet. It really kind of is. Very vegetarian. A lot of grain, legumes, and veggies, mm -hmm. and fruit. If you eat kosher, you're going to be healthier than the average person. You probably will. Uh, we were talking about kosher meat the other day, and one of the things about kosher meat is that they take they take a lot of the fat off. Marbled steak, not kosher. So you better have a good sauce. I read somewhere that the Jews were um, discriminated against during the plagues in Europe because they were healthier than the average person. So of course had blame held were right. held blame. Yeah, you know. 
Yeah, same thing with the Black Plague. They're all taking baths in the same water. We didn't. We had a mikvah, which is flowing water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> live kosher, live long. Don't get me started here. <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. Uh, on a holiday, Jews should eat meat and drink wine. There could be no real rejoicing without meat to eat and wine to drink. I'm, I'm, I played with vegetarianism when I was in, being a vegetarian when I was in uh, college. I really kind of liked it. Diet for a small planet, combining protein, stuff like that. It's cheaper too. Yeah. Well, not today, but back then when you had co-ops and stuff, it was very much, it was very cheap. Today yeah. it's all like, you know, avant-garde and fashionable. So you got sprouts and, you know, whole foods market, you know, that charges yeah. a ton of money to be fashionable, whatever. Yeah. True. And while one eats and drinks oneself, it is also a duty to feed the stranger, the orphan, mm -hmm. the widow, other poor people. One who locks the doors of their courtyard and eats and drinks with their spouse and family without sharing. That meal is not a celebration, but it's a celebration of one's belly. It is of such people that the Bible says their sacrifices shall be for them as the bread of mourning. All that eat from it shall be polluted for their bread and their own appetite. So is it. It is preferable to spend more on gifts to the poor than on poor meal or on presents to friends. But there's no joy greater or more glorious than the joy of gladdening the hearts of the poor, the orphans, the widows, and the strangers. Indeed, one who causes the hearts of these people to rejoice acts as the divine presence, of whom the Bible says to revive the spirit of the humble and revive the heart of the contrite. Monica. All right, see, here it is. Yeah, I see. That's not our book. And I asked them once, I said, why do we do that? Oh, for historic perspective. Sukkah, they compare it to Sukkah. All right, so we saw I had a lot of Hanukkah. Each night there's a candle. Here are three blessings. On the first night, we do the Sheachianu. Who has, you know, who has led us, who has led us to this time, sustained us, and gave us this time. Uh, you load the Hanukkah from right to left, but you light it from left to right. So you always put the, the, the newest candle in first. You always light the, first, the newest candle first. Okay, great Latka versus Hamantashen. Here's a recipe for y'all. Ten ways to mark the Jewish year. So I told you about like that uh, um, website, HebCal. Oh, here's Tisha B'Av, by the way. So you can load that Tisha B'Av, uh, that HebCal. You can set up a calendar and then you can download it and integrate it into your Google, Yahoo, or Outlook calendars as well. Uh, Tisha B'Av, all the, a commemoration of all the tragedies of Jewish history, particularly the destructions of the temples. Uh, three weeks and nine days, chanting of Echa, lamentations, and destruction. The Messiah will be born on Tisha B'Av. Uh, attend synagogue for the high holidays. We have, if you can, either tune in or we're going to be doing Passover 7 and 8. Uh, as I said, Passover 8. Eighth day of Passover is Thursday. We also do Yisker, remembering all our, our loved ones. It's one of the four times a year we do that. Passover 7 is Wednesday. We're going to be reading from uh, the Torah, the uh, uh, Song of the Sea. Um, make Shabbat a part of your life. Do something with Shabbat, whatever you do. You know, attend services, get on Zoom, you know, just sit down and read the Torah a little bit. Uh, build a sukkah. That's, oh, that's, that's great. Once you build a sukkah, you're hooked. You sit in there. It's just, we just sit there and, and it's just, oh, it's just like you're in a very special place. Uh, like Hanukkah candles. Um, Hanukkah is not a substitute for Christmas. Okay, enough said. Stay up all night studying for Shavuot. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll get people together. Anybody wants to like pull an all-nighter or something. I'll probably be done by like two in the morning. I just, I just can't do it anymore. Tish Ma'av fast in their honor. I'm sorry? I said me neither. Yeah. <laughs> it's getting too old. Go wild on Simchat Torah. That's always fun. Have celebrations in your home. You know, try it. Some of you, you know, you know Jewish, you know, if some of you are not Jewish, you know Jewish people, you're with Jewish people. So, you know, just 
Or invite your friends and neighbors over. We've done that. We've invited non-Jewish people to our celebrations and have a good time. They do. Yeah. And they're always surprised. I don't understand that. Because it's a real celebration because we're doing things. Because it's meaningful. It's got spiritualness in it. That's the difference. They always enjoy it. And then they have, yeah, and they're always surprised they enjoy it. Well, see, I'm not surprised because it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's you know, I mean, fun. yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just so much, it's involved, it's fun, it means something when you're going through this, and you yeah. see it, you see the difference between a Jewish person that just does it, and then somebody who's like, who's new to it, and they say, wow, that's, that was quite an experience. I mean, you always get that, you know, so, good stuff. It is. All right, questions, comments? This is really important because in trying to learn over the years, I've, uh, of course, had many blunders. That's why I was so nervous when I came to Temple of Shalom, I had to do everything wrong because I have made annoying mistakes in the past. This class is really good. Good. Well, I've made annoying mistakes myself. So there it is. And I'm a rabbi. So that's why I use, that's why I have all these moxors. A moxor is, means a uh, cycle. And most people are familiar with the mocks or the special prayer books we use for like the high holidays, Rosh Hashanah and, and, and Yom Kippur. In addition to that, I've got some of the art scroll books. I've got the one for Passover. I got one for Shavuot. Uh, I got one for Tisha B'Av and I've got one for Sukkot. And it, I can't tell you how much it helps me, a rabbi, stay on track. Because there's so many things like this year we did. We actually read part of Song of Songs. For the Shabbat holiday, I don't think they've ever done that before. You know, you don't think of it, but we do it. Yeah, you, you know, have we did. We did. A, I'm sorry. Yeah, you have the most challenging position of all. Yeah, yeah, and and you need, you know, I mean, you got these rabbis been doing it all along, you know, especially people who are very traditional. It's just part of their lives, yeah. but it's always a challenge, and this is where conservative Judaism comes in, you know, to keep the tradition, but also maybe take a few liberties that make it more interesting. You know, when I was a kid, I remember, of course, to me now, it's a fond memory, believe it or not. My father looks at me weird. But when I was a kid, went over to my grandparents for, for Passover, you know, my two uncles and, you know, my father and everything. And we're just like, they were davening the Haggadah. So, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Can't think of any. Anybody else? Okay. If you do, let me know. You've got these two documents that I've sent you. I'm going to go ahead and uh, put this lesson, this the session. I'm going to say session because people hear lessons, they think, you know. So I'll put this session on, uh, I'll put it on my YouTube channel, I'll put it on my website. And if you guys have any questions or anything, you know, you know where to find me. Email, text, call, whatever. I appreciate it. I like to watch them more than once. That way it sinks in better. Well, well yeah. they're, they're there. That's what they're there for. Your YouTube channel is really awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm into it. All right. That's all for today. Um, thank you very much. And we will see you next Sunday. And next Sunday, I think we're doing, I believe it's Shabbat. Yeah, Shabbat. Class 5 is Shabbat. So I'll have that come out soon, and I'll load it. And uh, see you then. I'll be working in the hospital, so I'll be looking forward to the recording. There you go. All right. Thank Good you. deal. All right, Thank everybody. You. Thank you. Care, Again, if you can make Bye, services, do that. Not, you know, Shabbat, whatever. Okay, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.